So today's gonna be a combination video. First, I'm gonna be talking about my EDC for the wedding that I went to, because a lot of you guys were curious when I mentioned I did go to a wedding. Um, as well as a story time video, because I'm gonna be talking about a lot of stories. A lot of things happened. I was gone um, for two to three days, and I had an amazing time. First, let me just get that out of the way. It was my wife's cousin's wedding. Uh, her cousin, Carlos, was marrying his fiance, obviously, uh, Giordana, two wonderful people. I'm very blessed and lucky that I love all my in-laws. My wife has a, a huge Portuguese family, wonderful people. Her aunts and uncles and cousins, just, I love them all. They're really, really fun to be around. Uh, very genuine people. The food, obviously, is amazing. <laughs> um, of course, this wedding was catered. It wasn't their Portuguese food, which I always love getting a little treat when I visit. Uh, but the food was, I mean, the actual wedding was kind of upscale, pretty ritzy, very fancy. I've never been to a wedding at all, period. Like, I've never been to a wedding. I know it sounds crazy, but anytime I've ever been invited to a wedding, it was either out of state and too far, I couldn't afford to go, couldn't travel, or just didn't, the timing didn't line up right with what was going on in my life. So I've never been to a wedding until recently. That was my first wedding ever. It was awesome. I mean, open bar, um, full catered food. I mean, obviously the actual dinner was like awesome, amazing, amazing dinner. But besides that, they had like a cocktail hour and they had, there was way too much food, way too much food, way too much alcohol, way too much fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the wedding itself was amazing, it was awesome. I had a really, really good time. But again, going back to the EDC part of this whole thing, I chose this stuff based on two major reasons. I knew I was gonna be drinking and I knew I was gonna be in Connecticut. Okay, that's where my uh, wife's side of the family lives. So, number one, I don't have a carry permit in Connecticut, uh, but also because I knew I'd be drinking, I chose not to bring a firearm, okay? Not only was you know, it not going to be a legal thing, I don't bring my firearms where I'm not allowed to. I would eventually like to get a carry permit in Connecticut, it is uh, costly and uh, will take some time, but that's something that's on my to-do list. Uh, but even if I was allowed to carry there, you just don't wanna carry and drink, it's just not a good combination, so. Uh, no firearm, which felt very strange to me, by the way. Um, but besides that, knowing that I was going to be drinking, and also a huge part of it was wearing a uh, tuxedo, that changes everything completely. Not only are there less pockets, but um, there's certain things you don't want to carry. Certain things are classy. Some things aren't classy. Uh, the knife I chose to carry is definitely not classy, <laughs> which is really funny. I'm sure no one chose this. I didn't read all the comments yet. But this is the uh, $4 Ozark Trail Lockback, okay? We'll talk about that for sure. Because I, I know you guys know I have plenty of options for really nice knives, really classy stuff for a wedding, and I chose the $4 folder. But anyway, um, yes, the tuxedo. Let's start there. Let's go back a little bit and start with the tuxedo. Um, when I found out I was going to a wedding, uh, I don't have a suit. I just don't own one currently. I used to have a suit. doesn't fit me. <laughs> so... Uh, I had to go decide whether I was going to rent a suit or I was going to buy a suit. Now, for me to go out and just buy a suit, even a cheap suit, would have cost probably $150 to $200 in that kind of in that range for just a cheap suit from like J.C. Penney or something. Okay. The other option was to rent one. Now, in renting a suit, uh, you have a couple bonuses. Uh, the place I went, they were tailoring it to you for free, so it, it was a better fit as opposed to off the rack fat guy suit, which just looked like you're wearing a, you know, a, a silk potato sack, basically. Um, plus, I got a much nicer suit. Now, originally, I thought it was gonna cost like 60 or 70 bucks to rent it for, uh, for two days because that's what they advertised. But of course, that's not how it works out. It ended up being like 180 or $190 to rent this suit. Now, I could have bought one for that price, but again, it wouldn't have been tailored. It wouldn't have been nearly as nice. And quite honestly, I don't want a fat guy suit. I want to lose weight, so I don't want to invest in clothes I'm not going to be able to wear in the future. So I ended up going to rent it. And just basically how it works is they, they advertise these prices, but then you go there and say, oh, you know, our super cheap, you know, suit isn't available. But guess what? We have this that's available, and that's what it was. The cheapest thing they had available at the time was a tuxedo. I wasn't planning on, on renting a tuxedo. I was planning on renting a suit. But once I, you know, decided to just go with the tux, that's fine. It's a one-time thing. You know, I definitely did not want to pay that money to rent a suit, or a tux, rather. But I ended up buying the pocket square and buying the bow tie myself so I can use those in the future. Um, 
It's actually cheaper just to buy the stuff than to add it into the rental. But anyway, long story short, I had to rent this tuxedo. I went there, I got fitted. This old Italian guy was feeling me up and down, <laughs> which wasn't very pleasant, but uh, he fit my suit beautifully. It, it fit me very well, so I'm, I'm glad he took all my measurements and stuff and, and you know, copped the feel and wrapped his arm around my, my belly like a big old bear hug. This guy was on it. I mean, these people who measure you out, uh, I know they're not, they're not shy at all. They're, they're all up in your, your seams, you know what I'm saying? But hey, it came out great. So very happy about how that turned out. Um, it was very difficult to not spill anything on the suit. I was very worried I was gonna damage it or something. But anyway, so now I have my tuxedo, I'm ready to go. Now it's time to decide what I am going to carry. Now you guys know I have tons of options. I have lots and lots of gear, all kinds of flashlights and knives and this, that, and the other, right? So why did I choose this? Let's start with the knife again. Why? Why did I choose the $3.97 exactly Walmart's Ozark Trail folding knife with the mystery steel? Well, the major reason is I don't care if I lose it. All right. So going back to the reasons why I chose this stuff, I knew I'd be drinking. And it kind of freaked me out of the idea of getting drunk and losing a very expensive knife. I don't know why it just kind of stuck in my head that I was going to lose whatever I bring. So that's why I chose this. I mean, even though it has that little bit of brown in there, um, it, it's kind of a classy looking knife, honestly. And what's really funny is that I had this in my jacket pocket, my uh, tux jacket. And uh, at some point after the uh, ceremony was done at the church, everyone went outside and they were handing out these little vials of bubbles. All right. And the idea was everyone was going to be blowing bubbles and they'll be all in the air. And when the, you know, bride and groom come out, all the pictures will be taken and these, these uh, beautiful bubbles in the background, right? Makes for a nice picture. Well, they started handing out these little vials of bubbles and they were shrink wrapped on top and no one can open them. They were like super, super difficult to open. There was no perforated edge or anything. It was just like super tight shrink wrap. So guess what? Man with a plan, right? Gotta be prepared. I broke out my $4 knife and everyone used it. There must have been at least 15 or 20 people who used this to open their bubbles. Yay, Jeff's the hero, right? Actually, I give credit to, there's a guy, Phil, who's uh, married to one of my wife's uh, family members. And Phil had a little Victorinox uh, Swiss Army knife. He had a Sack Classic. So thumbs up to Phil. He was able to, to, uh, to open his bubbles on his own. Um, but what's really funny to me is that I passed this knife around and I got a lot of compliments. Wow, that's a really nice knife. No, it's not, but thank you. Thank you anyway. And what makes me laugh about that is I could have had a $500 knife in my pocket and I would have got the exact same compliment from these people who don't know about knives, don't care about knives. The point is when they needed it, they had it. And it was sharp and it has a nice point on it. And guess what? It opened those bubbles up totally fine. But I find it hilarious that that's what I pulled out and I still got compliments on it and people were still thankful and it was still handy, right? The cheapest tool to most expensive one, the most important one is the one that's in your pocket when you need it, right? And people have said that before too. It doesn't matter what, what you have, as long as you have it. And I had it, right? I just think that's hilarious to me. Um, but yeah, that's the reason why I chose this knife is because I figured... I actually thought I would just give it to someone at some point. I actually kind of forgot. I was going to, like, someone's going to use it, and they'd be like, oh, thanks, and I'll go, no, nah, keep it. You know, and they'd be like, what, really? But that never happened. I actually forgot about it. You can see that horrible fit and finish right here with this little band. Ugh. But, yeah, so uh, now this has a nice little story behind it, so I'll probably keep the thing. <clears throat> Ozark Trail folder comes to the rescue. But it's just, like I said, the funniest part is all the compliments. Wow, that's a really nice knife. Okay. I just nodded my head and said thanks. You know, I, there's no reason to get into... It's not the place or the time to get into knife stuff. But it was helpful. So huge thumbs up to just having a knife, period. Doesn't matter which one. Um, next thing was a lighter. I knew 100% that I wanted to bring a lighter because there's tons of people who smoke and I figured they'd be outside smoking back and forth. And guess what? I was right. There's plenty of breaks in between, you know, the whole, you know, between the, um, well, not during the uh, actual um, ceremony, obviously everyone's sitting there for the ceremony, but during the reception, people are drinking, they're taking pee breaks and going out for smokes. And I was out there many a time and uh, this lighter came to the rescue as well and lit plenty of cigarettes while I was there. So 
This is a random lighter. I don't even know where I got this from. It says Honest on the front. Um, just It's slim and it's black and silver. That's, again, the reason why I got it. Uh, the reason why I picked this over the numerous lighters I have. It was lightweight, small, and it was black and slim. That's pretty much it. This sat in my jacket pocket uh, with the knife on the right side, right breast pocket, I guess. So I had the knife and the lighter just like that, and they both got used heavily throughout the wedding, which was a huge thumbs up. Um, now, as far as the wallet goes, as you can see in the background here, you know I have a fat, fat wallet. That Saddleback leather, it's too much. It's packed with stuff. Not only does it not match the suit at all, but it's way too fat, and there's, it's totally unnecessary for me to bring all that crap to the wedding. So I broke out the big skinny wallet. I EDC this wallet for a couple of years back in the day, and this thing is the smallest wallet that I have. It happens to be black. Worked out perfectly. All I brought was my license. I didn't need my carry permit because I didn't have my gun with me. I didn't need, you know, AAA and all the other cards that I carry. I didn't care. I just didn't bring any of that stuff. I had my license, and I had one bank card, because I had multiple accounts. I had one bank card and one emergency credit card. Okay, that's all I brought. And I had like, I think $30 on me. I had a 20 and a 10. That's all I was bringing. Super simple, this was on my front left breast pocket so I can always keep checking it, you know what I mean? I was very, very concerned, again, with the drinking aspect of things that I was going to lose stuff. So I actually wrote down what cards I brought so that if I did lose my wallet or something that I can cancel those cards right away or put a, you know, a block on them, whatever I had to do. And again, that's why I didn't, I didn't need a lot of cash on me. I mean, uh, there was nothing that specifically I was going to buy. I knew I needed to get some gas before I went. In fact, right when I left, I got $10 just to top off the tank. But anyway, so that was my wallet. As far as the keys, it's not what you see here. I just didn't want to take it off. All I had was my actual car key for the car that I was bringing. I brought this capsule holder, which has three Motrin in it, which did get used the next day, which I knew would. And I brought this flashlight. So it was literally just these three things on a split ring, and that was it, okay? Flashlight, just because it kind of rounded the, the whole uh, EDC off, always have a flashlight on you, because you never know, power could have went out at either place. It's just nice to have a flashlight, especially just for, on the floor, you know, just so people don't trip and stuff, you know? They're just practical things that people don't think of, people don't prepare. So that was it, it was really that simple. Phone, wallet, license, bank card, credit card, lighter, cheap knife, uh, main key, flashlight, and pill holder. That's all I had. And honestly, most of it got used. Everything got used except for the, uh, the flashlight. I never had to use that, which was a good thing. Um, but that was it. I mean, it's, it was that simple. I, it felt so strange to me. You guys know I carry so much gear every single day, so much weight, and just stuff, you know? And I felt very unprepared I, I felt weird about things especially with the firearm when you carry a gun every day everywhere you go the one time you don't have it in your mind you're thinking that's when you're gonna need it you know what I mean it's like Murphy's Law you know you carry it everywhere every day that one time you don't have it something's gonna happen that's how you, people think at least a lot of people um, you know same with anything it could be a knife it could be your phone the one day you leave your phone at home that's when there's an emergency and you really need your phone so I was a little freaked out by the whole thing but uh, you know, once I started <laughs> throwing back some drinks, I <laughs> didn't really care, to be honest. So let's talk about the drinking for a second here, because that's quite a story. Um, I knew I'd be drinking at this party. I don't drink much. Uh, I love beer. I love, actually, I love a lot of liquor. But I just haven't drank in, in many, many months just because, number one, I, I don't want the extra calories. You know, I'm trying to lose weight, and that's not a good thing. Plus, you know, when I got into craft beer, I got into it super hard. I was drinking all the time, and, and honestly, it's just not good. It's just not good to drink that much, you know? So, I haven't really drank any kind of alcohol in a long time. And knowing that it was a wedding, knowing especially it was my first wedding and stuff, and, you know, I was a little nervous about the whole thing. I knew I'd be drinking. I knew there was a, an open bar, and it was a pretty ritzy place and stuff. And, and you know, I, I just was planning for that. I was planning to get, you know, annihilated. And to be honest, it was the most I've ever drank in my entire life in one sitting, but I wasn't the most drunk I've ever been. When I get super drunk, it's because I drink fast. I don't have to drink that much, but I, I drink really, really fast. Uh, that's when I get like stupid drunk. But this didn't happen. I mean, the reception lasted till one in the morning. 
I want to say it started around like five or six. So that was a lot of time. I was drinking the entire time, but it was spread out enough. Plus there was tons of food, which definitely helped. Obviously if you have a full stomach, uh, you're not going to get as drunk. But uh, I, I mixed a lot of stuff. I'll, let, me tell you what, let me tell you what I drank. All right, so I started off with a uh, white Russian. All right, me and my wife got a white Russian. And by the way, she, she milked her drinks. I mean, she drank very slowly, just barely got a buzz. And that was cool, but I had a plan. I was a man with a plan. I'm having a good time. I definitely wanted to drink. And trust me, I got my, my money's worth, so to speak. Um, so yeah, started off with a white Russian. Then after that, I went to beer. Uh, they had like three or four different types of beer. Um, I think it was like Heineken, Bud Light, um, Coors or something, and some Sam Adams. So Sam Adams was the best option, in my opinion, just some Boston lager. I probably had six or seven bottles of beer. Um, then after that, I switched to a Tom Collins, <laughs> just because the simple fact I'd never had one. Uh, I remembered it from Meet the Parents. Um, De Niro, that's what he drank in that movie, that his character drank Tom Collins. So I always wanted to try one. So I tried it, eh, it was all right, whatever. So I had the Tom Collins and after that I switched to gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah, great combination, right, all these, all these drinks. Gin and tonic is awesome. I happen to be one of my favorite drinks. It's very refreshing, it's awesome in the summertime. It is basically, and they had top shelf liquor there too. They weren't, you know, poor nail polish remover. Uh, it was Tangeray, which is the standard for a good gin and tonic and then just regular tonic and a little wedge of lime. And those go back easy, you know what I mean? If you like uh, like Sprite and stuff like that, it, it, trust me, those things go down nice and smooth. Uh, without exaggerating, I had at least four or five of those. Then after that, I went back to White Russians and I probably had another three or four White Russians. Then I went back to beer. Now, by the way, this whole time, I'm going back and forth to the bar, and there's a really classy, nice woman, probably in her 50s or so. She's all smiles, very professional, very nice. I, I mean, I went up, I, I got at least 20-something drinks. No joke. And every time I went back up there, she had like a tip jar, you know? And there's like, there's a couple singles, but there's fives and tens and twenties and stuff in this tip jar. And, you know, it's an open bar, so... I. I want to tip, but all I have is a $20 bill on me, and I don't want to tip $20. Maybe you think I'm cheap for that, but, you know, I'm thinking it's, it'll be gas money home or whatever. <laughs> so, at first, it wasn't a big deal when I got two or three drinks. I'm like, oh, no big deal. But, I mean, after 20-something drinks, towards the end of the night, it must have been midnight at this point. They're closing down in about an hour. And I told the woman, I'm like, listen, you've been pouring me drinks all night long. I feel really bad. I want to throw you a tip. I'm like, I know this doesn't sound very classy at all, but I don't really know what to tip. I don't want to give $20. <laughs> I don't want to give you a dollar. And she's just kind of smiling there, and, and she's like, you know, tip whatever you want. You don't have to tip. You know, we're glad to be here. We're getting paid for the service. These tips are extra. She was, like, super nice about it, you know. And uh, so what I did was I said, I'll tell you what. I looked in the jar. At this point, she emptied out the jar, and there's, like, a five and some singles. So I told her, I said, how about this? How about I throw you this 20? And I'll take whatever's in that jar. What do, you, what do you say? How about a little gamble, you know? Because at this point, I'm pretty buzzed. Uh, so she's kind of just laughing. She's like, sure, all right, fine. So she takes the 20 and pockets it and, and gives me the fistful of singles and, and the five. And uh, I didn't know what I took until the next day. I woke up and looked at my wallet and remembered the whole thing. And it ended up being like, I think it was $13. So I tipped seven bucks. So I thought that was kind of funny, though. What actually I thought was funny was when I was counting the money, I thought it'd be... It'd be Messed up, really, if there happened to be more than $20 in there. Almost like I took money from her instead of tipping. But luckily, it didn't turn out that way. Um, I just, you know, I, in the moment, eh, you had a pretty strong buzz going. Didn't really know what to do. Didn't know what the, you know, the standard was as far as tipping. I would, If I could afford to throw $20, I would have. Trust me. I would have given her 100 bucks for the tip. But anyway, so drinking portion of the wedding. Because it was spaced out, because I had the food, uh... Like I said, it was fine. I basically was just, uh, I was at a strong buzz level. Like I was totally functional. I can speak fine. I wasn't slurring my words. I wasn't falling down or anything. I did use the bathroom three or four times because I was drinking so much. Uh, and I, you know, I don't have any crazy bathroom stories except for the fact that when I first went in there, um, I couldn't find my fly because I was already starting to get a buzz going. So I was sitting there playing with it for a little bit. And the guy next to me, I don't know who he was. I didn't recognize him at all, but I think he thought I was playing with something else. 
So that was a little awkward. Um, but then later in the night, I had to take a dump. And I went in there, and I forgot I was wearing suspenders. <laughs> so imagine, like, I'm pretty buzzing, and I'm in this the stall. There's a guy in the regular stall side. I go in the big handicap stall, which I hate, because you're too far to, like, kick the door shut if someone's coming in, you know? But I'm in there, and I take off my suit jacket, and I'm hanging it up, you know, and I'm, I'm taking my stuff out. Because I always, like, like, when I have my EDC on me, if I ever have to go to the bathroom in public, I always put my stuff, like, on top of the toilet or the paper towel holder or toilet paper holder, rather, just to get everything out of the way so I can physically see it all and make sure it's all going back. Plus, when, you know, I take my pants down, I have all this stuff on me, I don't want anything falling out. So I'm just used to doing that. So I get all this stuff out. And I unzip my pants, and it's it's tuxedo pants, which like I'm not used to. It's got the regular zipper in the front, but then there's like a a flap with a button, and then when you undo the button, there's like a hook on the side that keeps it there. Then there's an inside button, you know. And I kind of forgot all about this, so I'm fiddling with my pants for like probably five minutes. I finally get the pants undone, and I go to pull them down, and they're not going down. So I'm like tugging on my pants. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm in there because I have to take a dump. You know, this is kind of time sensitive. So I'm like tugging on my pants, I'm not even kidding, maybe 30, 40 seconds, right? Finally, I realized, duh, I'm wearing suspenders. So I'm like, all right, and I slip them over my shoulders and pants come down and boom, here come the fireworks. So at this point though, it, it, was, it was pretty cool because I didn't care. Usually I'm self-conscious when I'm in the bathroom, I don't wanna like fart loud and stuff, but you know, that's what it's for, it's the bathroom. If you ever go in the bathroom in public, you hear people, trust me, no one else cares. People are, are blowing out and making all kinds of noises. Trust me, I was a little one-man band in there, and whoever came in knew that. But I didn't care. So, cleaned up. Took me another five, ten minutes to get all my, my clothing back on properly. Make sure I'm uh, presentable, looked in the mirror, and we're good to go. Back to the party. So, yeah, after the, uh, the party, the reception was over. That was one in the morning. Then I got a ride back. I already set up a... Uh, um, knowing that I'd be drinking, I didn't bring the car there or anything. I actually parked at the hotel because we're staying the night. And it was pretty cool because there was a whole wing that was dedicated to the uh, the wedding. You know, like people buy a block of rooms or whatever for events like this. So it was cool because all the family was close to each other in different rooms. But anyway, we got our designated driver. Um, and she took us back to the hotel. And instead of going to bed because it's one in the morning, we decided to do an after party. An after after party. Because the reception is an after party. So it's one in the morning. Well, at this point, it's probably two in the morning. We decided to go to uh, my wife's cousin Paulie's room. Paulie's awesome, by the way. I, I mean, I know you don't know him. <laughs> you have no idea who he is. But he's a character. I, I love him. Awesome guy. Just so fun. So outgoing and just fun guy. But anyway, so we go to his hotel. He's like, yeah, party's in my room. Room whatever it was, 303 or I forget the room number. But I'm not kidding. Went into this room and it's a regular standard. It's not a suite or anything. It's a regular one king bed hotel bedroom. Okay, with a little balcony that's probably four foot by seven foot. We packed about 30 or 40 people in that room. You literally couldn't even sit down, okay? Immediately, not even five minutes later, of course, there's a noise complaint because everyone's like drunk and screaming. So we all had to leave. The, the hotel manager was really nice and said, all right, well, everyone can go down in the lobby of the hotel if you want. This was at an NBC Suites. Had a really nice big lobby, so everyone went downstairs. Well, they went back to the room and changed in the pajamas, so it was like a pajama party. So now there's like 30 people, well, maybe not as much. Some conked out, went to sleep. I'd say maybe 20 people or so. All went down to the lobby, hung out there for another hour or so. Finally went back up to the room and went to bed. <laughs> but uh, it was just, it was a blast. Like I said, I've never been to a wedding before. So this is a really cool first experience. It, like I said, it was a little ritzy. Um, I don't have anything to compare it to, but... People walking around with hors d'oeuvres and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, as far as like the music, I, the actual reception was just it was awesome. It was a really cool experience. But they also had a live uh, singer band there that was doing some um, traditional Portuguese songs and stuff. And it was just it was awesome. It was really really fun. Got on the dance floor with uh, the old wife for the slow dance. Um, watching people, it's just oh my god, so much fun seeing family. I don't get to see uh, my extended family, my in laws, very often. So it was a really cool experience and very happy for the two people who got married. So, geez, that's kind of long-winded. Um, that's about it, I guess. I mean, I have, like I said, I have some other side stories here and there. Not sure if I'll share them in the future or not, but 
Overall, it was a good time. Uh, I did not lose anything. I didn't spill anything on my tuxedo, which is nice. Uh, I kind of expected I would. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I woke up the next day. And so I'll continue with the story here. So the next day I wake up. And by the way, I shared a room to save on money. So it was me and my wife in one bed, one queen bed. And the other queen bed was my mother-in-law and my grandmother-in-law. So needless to say, there was no fooling around, unfortunately. <laughs> that would have been very awkward. Um, but no, fully uh, respectable night. I knew that going in, you know, it was just easier just to split the bill on the room instead of getting your own room. Um, but the next day I woke up and I had a little bit of a headache, but I was so nauseous just from the combination of like foods and, and drinks. I felt like garbage, man. It was a pretty rough hangover and everyone wanted to go to a diner for breakfast. I went to the diner. It was a beautiful diner. Um, I forget the name of it. Three, three Brothers, I think. The whole thing, I mean, obviously people watching from all around the world, but there's plenty of people in Connecticut that might know some of these places. Uh, I forget the name of the reception place, but it was it was amazing. It had uh, it was right on the water, and there was uh, a gazebo, a lake gazebo outside. I think this is in Danbury, Danbury, Connecticut. I'm sure someone will th you know throw down different resorts and and places on the in the you know comment section and stuff. I just can't remember the name of it, but it was it was just beautiful. It was really really nice the whole thing. Uh, but the next day, just I felt like garbage all day. We hung around. It was really nice, though, because we had time to go back to uh, my wife's grandmother's house, and she could have time with her because uh, she didn't get to see her in, like, got a year and a half or something. So she sat there. They were talking in Portuguese the whole time, so I was just kind of staring at my coffee. And <laughs> She's a wonderful cook, too. Later on, we had uh, she made us some uh, monkfish stew. If you've ever seen a monkfish, it is an ugly fish, but it's the first time I ever ate it, and it's a pretty... It's a hearty fish, you know what I mean? Like it's meaty, and it's uh, pretty mild. Um, so yeah, if you ever if you like white fish or you like fish that's not too fishy, let's just say uh, try that. It was really good. She made it some kind of, um, you know, I don't know, stew, gravy sauce. I don't know. There's potatoes in it. It was delicious though. It was really good. I don't know if that's good hangover food or not, but it went down easy. I had a nice big bowl of that. Um, it was just nice. It was nice seeing family. It was nice. You know, my wife, uh, as a total aside here, when we met, she came up here. She changed her entire life for me. You know what I mean? Like, I live in Pennsylvania. I'm in the middle of nowhere. She's from the city. She's from Waterbury. And there's conveniences and stores everywhere. And it's a city life, you know? That's what she knew. And she changed everything for me, you know? So every chance I get to go back there and for her to see her family and, and have that, you know, I try to do. We don't get to do it often. I'm very excited that we're able to do that. That is nor here or there and has nothing to do with the wedding. So the video is now over. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Um, let me know if you had any idea. Because I, like I said, I mean, all the comments I read thus far on the old EDC video, no one guessed this. People guessed Spyderco's and people guessed the, uh, the dagger that I just showed. You know, recent knives I've had in reviews and videos and stuff. I didn't think I'd bring this either. When I first, you know, heard about the wedding, I'm like, oh, it's an awesome chance to carry the Sabenza again, or, you know, this, that, or the other thing. I have a lot of classy knives I could have taken, but I was really fearful. I don't know what, something came over me where I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna get annihilated and I'm gonna lose all my nice stuff. <laughs> so that's what I was thinking. Luckily, I didn't, and I didn't. I didn't get super drunk or anything. I just got a really good buzz, maybe, maybe light drunk territory. Uh, the scariest moment was in the bathroom when I uh, didn't know why my pants wouldn't come down. <laughs> but luckily I figured that out. And that's pretty much it. That's the my experience in a nutshell. So hopefully you guys enjoyed you know, some of the stories. And uh, that's pretty much it for now. I think if I go to another wedding, I will definitely uh, upgrade a couple things. I will, I will bring some classy stuff knowing that it'll be okay. I have to have a little more faith in myself. It's going to be okay. I'm not going to lose my stuff. And luckily I didn't, <laughs> but I'll tell you, it feels super weird. If you carry stuff every day, like all kinds of things, imagine just right now, not even your phone. What would it be like for you to just go on a trip for two, three days with nothing, nothing in your pockets, no phone. Well, obviously your wallet. Let's just say that. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll even give you this, your phone and your wallet. I know some of you are like, well, that's all I carry. But most of you, if you're in the gear community and you're into all the stuff that we're all into, you know, the knives and the guns and the lights and the, you know, this, that, and the other, Imagine just keeping it all home for like two or three days. It's just so weird. I kept grabbing my pockets. It looked like I was feeling myself up. 
because I'm like, ah, oh, I can't, you know, like I have those moments where I'm like, I go to reach for my gun because throughout the day, I'm always patting myself down, like make sure my gun's, you know, where it should be, you know, feel back for my wallet, make sure my wallet didn't fall in my pocket. I'm constantly doing that already. And when I was there, I, I kept like kind of forgetting. I go to reach for my gun just to make sure it's in the right position. I'm like, oh, oh, where is it? Did it fall out? You know, and I'm buzzing, so, you know, and it, luckily I quickly realized I didn't bring it. But it was a very strange feeling, you know, just not knowing what's going to happen and what you're going to need. Especially when you're prepared all the time and you go unprepared, it just feels really weird. Obviously, when I was a kid, I walked around. I didn't have a gun. It was, wasn't a problem. I walked around. You know, I was six or seven years old. My parents never carried knives. They got by. A lot of people can get by with all the stuff. You don't need, you don't really need anything. But it's nice to have it. And I'll tell you what, when you do, you end up using it. I'm super happy that I was able to use this knife and this lighter a ton. A lot of people were very thankful for it. A lot of people are unprepared. And even though this is cheap, simple stuff, it worked. It worked totally fine. So anyway, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you soon. Well, tomorrow. Because you guys know I post a video every day, right? If you subscribe to the channel and you don't see a video every day, it's because you're not getting them. Because the subscription box stinks. So I guess you're supposed to click the bell down here or something. I don't know how that works. I'll tell you what you can do. If you like my videos, you can put me in your homepage or favorites or something and just check my channel every day because I post a video every single day. So that's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Hope you have a good one and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Take care.